Hello, this is Solar PV TV from EOPVSEC 2016. Now we are with um, Giovanni Di Santi, who is Director for Energy and Transport at GRC of the European Commission, but also he's a chair of the Advisory Committee of EUPVSEC. And it's a big honor for us to speak with you, Giovanni, because you are also a, a kind of history of energy in the European Union. Uh, buongiorno. Buongiorno. What is your feedback from the plenary session, opening session, and from the first discussions uh, at EUPVSEC with your colleagues from the committee, but also with uh, international audience? Well, the feedback was very, very useful because yesterday we saw that many actors, many stakeholders that are actually playing an important, significant role in developing this technology, they pointed out very peculiar aspects that should be considered now for us in the Commission in the forthcoming legislations. Namely, they are, first of all, we need to create an, an energy market for the photovoltaics because if you do not have a sufficient broad uh, market for photovoltaics there will be no investors so it's impossible to revamp the competitiveness of the european industry in photovoltaics so market is very important we also need technology breakthrough uh, events because again Europe can only gain again the leadership in this photovoltaic technology if we do go ahead in our research and our innovation. If we do stay with the traditional technology, I think that we can never be competitive with the Chinese manufacturer that they can produce the same piece of PV, same modules, same cells at much lower cost. So advance as we are always strong in advancing in technology research, creating financing mechanisms whereby we can recreate a, a live market, you know, and stable policy measures. Because again, investors do need to look at the futures in a comfortable way. So we need to create, let's say, reliable, stable political conditions. So boundary conditions, standards, and rules that they give confidence to the investor that the, the system the market will be sustainable and rewarding in the long term. And yesterday also we are discussing quite a lot with, uh, with you at the press conference, but also with other uh, committee members, that a very important topic right now is to discuss uh, with the, let's say, fossil players, with utilities, and actually to help also them to transform to the new energy. What do you think about that? Yeah, this is very clear. now photovoltaic as part of the renewable energy is becoming a major component of the future energy mixture. It's no more just one tiny component, but it's becoming one major, if not the largest component. So as such, we need to understand how we'll be part of this mixture. So we need to understand how it will complement the other forms of energy sources. So the traditional ones, coal, gas, nuclear, oil, you know. And this is something which, of course, is new to this community because a few years ago, again, photovoltaics and renewables and such. It, again, it was like a hobby, actually. Yes, it was like a hobby and nobody was disturbed by this hobby. But now the financial sector, the productive sector, industrial sector, uh, they all realize that they have to understand how to deal with these new intermittent energy sources. And so it's very important how to integrate the renewables into the system, into the society. This is the key issue now for understanding whether or not renewable will achieve the target that we have put forward to us. So to almost to produce 80% of our electricity via renewables in 2050. So it's clear that now integration is the key word. So Giovanni, uh, just to say to our viewers uh, that you are also a kind of visionary because you joined the GRC already in 85, you were observing all this energy transition and uh, you became director of the uh, energy directorate in 2007. And then uh, by anticipation also you were helping to take a decision to join also the transport, yes, to, the, uh, to, your, uh, to your directorate. And I think it was quite visionary because actually uh, even in the past we are just speaking about uh, solar photovoltaics as a hobby. Afterwards, it became a quite important source of renewable energies. But I think that today the discussion is not only about solar, not even about energy, but just about the whole 
package solution, which includes uh, energy, transportation, and also, you know, the, let's say the behavior of the society related to that. So how, how do you see, because as a visionary, how do you see the future? And uh, what will be your role also um, within GRC uh, towards this future? Uh, that, that's a very interesting question. At the moment, if you go around Europe and you mm -hmm. talk to the different citizens, you understand that their problem is not just how to see the future energy or transport. They want to see how there will be their future. And their future is now just one future, mm -hmm. which means how the society will evolve in the next 20, exactly. 30, 40 years. Of course, energy is a key component to allow, for example, a progress in the welfare, to allow the progress on the health situation, migration, so the, the civil society, how to produce more and more, less cost or competitiveness of European industry. So all these problems are very much connected. But what is very important is to understand that whatever solution you will make end up, mm -hmm. the citizens are now understanding that they will be proactive, they will be exactly. the center of this new system. The system is not coming from the sky, it's not just one vertical top down, and the citizen more or less, they accept whatever they propose. They will define, they will determine the final solution. And then you understand that, as you said, the behavioral science, so understanding how single individual will behave or groups of people will behave, how they will put forward some, or they will accept some decisions or some solutions is becoming cr crucial. So the behavioral science mm -hmm. applied to different, uh, let's say, fields like energy, transportation. For example, you mentioned transportation. It's obvious that it was already clear years ago that this was the very clear problem in Europe. Is 99% still based on fossil fuel, is individual based, public transportation is not yet enough, train, air, mm -hmm. shipping is not again well developed, at least at the level it should be. So it's clear that the energy demand, so the energy efficiency in transport would have been seen as the key problem. Mm -hmm. But now, if we do go to further involve transportation, to all the electrification of transport, then again the individual should decide, do right. I go for an electric car, which type of electric car, what is the, the real user do want to, to have for this new type of type, typology or, or cars? Am I willing to pay also for this type of new technology irrespective of where the energy comes from? So for example, I could say I, I like electric car only if the electricity comes from renewable and not from fossil fuel. So again, you, you put everything in the one pot. So the citizen will define the new era of these mixed solutions. And this is what is fascinating very much. So what GSC... So your work will be so exciting, actually. Yeah? No, no, that, that's why right. For us scientists, and for GSC in particular, which is again the scientific technical branch of the European Commission, to underpin all these possible development with sound you know, and independent, uh, let's say, analysis, uh, modeling, calculations, you know, is very exciting because there you are really putting your experience and know-how at the service of the citizen, the society. So, because again, whatever solution would be, should be well sound, scientifically based. Otherwise, you, you could go for any kind of schizophrenic decision that in a few years, they, years it will collapse again. So do you think that uh, still Europe can uh, retain uh, its leadership in the innovation, not only just in so solar, but maybe uh, in transportation, in electric cars, in the clean technology? Can we still be like a clean tech leader? Is it possible? It is possible because, again, Europe still has lots of key centers of excellence in university, research centers, industry. But we, I think we need to, to change the pace. If we do go ahead as we did in the last years without making at least a critical mass in the key issues. So without, if we go ahead with too many barriers, no? and we therefore divide the, the effort which are limited among different member states, among different stakeholders, I think will be very difficult to compete. Everywhere, the Commission is trying to bring ahead the same, the same message. We need 
to leverage the, the effort to the European level, so to reach a critical European mass dimension to compete from different points of view also with our competitors. Exactly. And this is something which would make possible for Europe to be still at the forefront of innovation, of, of research. Otherwise, again, as I said at the beginning, if you don't do this, I think it's difficult for us. If you do look at the, cl or the list of the best universities, okay, you see now many uh, universities from China already in the top 10 because they have lots of funds from, from resources from the government. They, they have big professor, highest possible professor. So we need, again, to realize that the world is, is running, it's is really it's running. running. It's not moving, it's running. And Europe has to run together. If we do again continue like we did in the past, it will be difficult. Yesterday we spoke with quite a lot of people who are coming from all over the world to UPVSEC because they still feel that Europe is you know, the center of the knowledge. What do you think about UPVSEC? In the photovoltaic sector, as I said yes during the plenary session, we still have the leadership in many parts of the, of the value chain, and not only in the cell and modules production, you know, for the installation, for the inverters, for the, for the all the components that are around the cell and modules, we are still leading. And we do have the best com com competitiveness, the best knowledge. So in that respect, I think we can easily, for example, if we do go for this kind of large scale uh, attempt, so we do go for gigawatt project and, and again, some gigawatt project, then we can reach the scale whereby we can also be competitive in manufacturing new technology of photovoltaics modules. So not just a traditional silicon based uh, material, but for example, new technology, thin films, or even even new, and and this is the the challenge. If you do find the right incentives, the right uh, economic and financial measures to convince investors from different parts of Europe, again, not just one member state, to invest, then I think we can be uh, very much successful. And the UPVSEC, in my view, was very, very instrumental because, again, as I said yesterday, if I do compare the type of discussion we did have yesterday to what we had several years ago, we saw how we did anticipate the, 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 the following up and therefore the evolution of the situation. So yesterday, again, we were discussing about the necessity to create the market, to create a technology breakthrough. Years ago, we were discussing about the integration. So this type of conference, whereby you have scientists, you have politicians, you have key representatives from the industrial uh, world, I think are essential for Europe to say, where do we want to go, who is coming with us, and what's the best solution. Thank you so much, uh, Giovanni, for this feedback and for the whole discussion. And uh, I assume we we'll meet next year at EU PBSEC, uh, the 33rd edition. Thank you so much. Vielen Dank. Thank you so much. That was Solar PBTV with the chair of the advisory committee of EU PBSEC in Munich.